why hello there i'm cat welcome to or welcome back to my channel for today's video i decided to try for a week to only eat recipes from the run fast eat slow cookbook and the run fast cook fast eat slow cookbook which are these awesome running centered cookbooks by Shailene Flanagan and Elise Kopecki. So a little bit about them before we get into the video. If you don't know them, Shailene's name probably sounds familiar. She won the 2017 New York City Marathon. She's the first American woman to do it since 1977. And she's also the fastest American woman to ever run the Boston Marathon. Two hours, 22 minutes, two seconds. Can you imagine? I can't imagine. It takes me at least 10 minutes to run a mile. She is also an Olympic medalist. She is currently retired, I believe, but now she's still very involved in the running world, including writing these awesome cookbooks, along with one of her friends from college, actually, Elise Kopecki, who, this is directly from their website, she's a New York Times bestselling author, chef, nutrition coach, and inspirational speaker. She moved to Portland, Oregon at the same time as Shailene did. They both went to work for Nike, but she went to work in their digital marketing department, whereas Shailene went to become a professional athlete. I love seeing people who are runners working in the world of running, even if they're not professional athletes, because that's kind of my, my dream job. Their cookbooks are both New York Times bestsellers. They're actually coming out with a third one. I believe it's coming out next fall. They've been posting on Instagram a lot about the fact they finally finished all the recipes in the manuscript. I'm so excited for it. That one is going to be called Rise and Run, so it's just going to be breakfast recipes. I'm very excited for that. For today's video, here's the, the challenge that I set out for myself. Just only eating recipes from the two cookbooks. Doesn't seem like it would be that hard, but I still managed to mess it up because I am what? Human. Let's just get right into it. I did actually meal prep some stuff the day before starting this but I managed to lose all the footage from that. You'll just have to believe me when I say that I made their salmon spread from scratch. And I also made hummus and pita chips from their cookbook as a little snack for the week. And let me talk about the salmon spread. I am obsessed with this salmon spread. I actually just finished it yesterday. I finished this challenge on Friday. It is Tuesday. So it took me just over a week of eating this almost every morning to eat the whole thing. And that was with like a hefty amount of this bread because I'm a, you know, I why, why chill on the spread when you could not? Also, I'm fin filming this on my lunch break. It's my fourth cup of coffee. I am deeply sorry if I talk too fast. <laughs> That's simply how it be. I would say the taste of this is like an eight and a half out of 10. I really like it. I love bagel and lox. And that's kind of like what this is going for because it's cream cheese, smoked salmon. But then the lemon kind of threw me off a little bit. It almost like was too tart. I don't know if it's just because it didn't mix well enough or what, but it just, it was not quite working. It might have been the tahini was off also. Uh, I did think it was weird that they didn't include a tahini recipe in the book when they said to use tahini because it's honestly super simple to make and they seem to love encouraging you to make simple recipes instead of buying them from the store. So I was kind of surprised by that. It is what it is. The spread was good. I mean, I ate the whole thing. And I would give it like a seven out of 10 in terms of ease. The smoked salmon did not want to chop up like at all. I really had to be like pressing down the knife. If I had the footage, you'd be able to see of the struggle of me trying to chop this up into little pieces. So that obviously is just not ideal. Also, I think that if the cream cheese had been softened, it would have been a lot easier to mix up. However, they didn't say to soften the cream cheese before doing this, so I didn't and I struggled quite a bit. I also, I threw this on an everything bagel just for Wegmans. They're subpar bagels, if I'm gonna be honest, but you know, they're good if they have stuff on them. Hence probably why I had heavy cream cheese on them. And then for snack, I had my homemade chipotle hummus and pita chips. Honestly, I'm never buying hummus ever again. I've never made hummus before. I guess it always intimidated me. I thought it was gonna be hard for some reason. It is not hard. It is literally so easy to make. And this recipe was so good. I didn't listen to the recipe. I was like, I like spicy things. I want this to be spicy hummus because I love spicy hummus. So the recipe called for one chipotle pepper and I put in four. Some mistakes get made. That's all right. That's okay. But this was a this was a big mistake. I should have probably put like two, perhaps two and a half. Four was too much. It was spicy. It burns my mouth every time I eat it. I am continuing to eat it. Don't get me wrong, but wasn't wasn't the smartest choice. But honestly, it was so easy to make. It tastes so good. I'm never buying hummus ever again. I'm just gonna make this with the appropriate amount of chipotle chili peppers. So the pita chips, I would say they were like 
9 out of 10 for easy to make but 10 out of 10 for taste. I really like them. No, I'd give them a 9 out of 10 for taste just because they were still pita bread just baked extra so that they were crispy. I would say the parts that were like thinner definitely were better so if you're getting pita bread that's really thin I think this recipe would be 10 out of 10. Ease to make it was a little bit annoying trying to cut them in half just because the pita bread that I got ended up being difficult and they didn't really specify like a brand that they recommended or anything in the cookbook so it was a little bit difficult. Honestly they were really good. I ate all of them within like three days and I still have some of the hummus left but honestly I've been eating it every day. It's really good. It makes a good amount and yeah I really I'm definitely gonna make those recipes again. Lunch day one I made the DIY grain salad. For this the taste 10 out of 10. I love this salad. I used for my grain I used quinoa for like a little you know healthy protein moment and then I added feta goat cheese for my topping and then for my seasonal vegetables I made brussels sprouts sweet potatoes and red onions I just did a sheet bake of them I baked them at like 400 degrees for like 40 minutes I would say in terms of easy to make I'd give it like an a seven and a half out of ten. Chopping up the vegetables takes a lot of time obviously but then also I thought that it was like I'm not gonna lie it's a little bit annoyed with the recipe because I am still learning what vegetables are in season when and they just said seasonal vegetables and then gave a list of vegetables that like could be seasonal but they didn't say like winter vegetables like blah 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 spring vegetables like you know they just said seasonal vegetables here is every vegetable that can be seasonal and that annoyed me a little bit. I had to like Google it and I feel like anytime that you're in a cookbook and you have to Google outside sources, it's probably not the best recipe. Honestly, this tastes really good. I put it on a bed of spinach and then I added, they said to do apple cider vinaigrette. I hate apple cider vinegar. I think that it tastes bad. I can barely stand it in anything. So I did not want to make an apple cider vinaigrette. So I just did balsamic vinegar olive oil mix that together drizzle over the top oh my god so good I also liked honestly that there was warm stuff in the salad I like that I don't know if you don't like having warm toppings in your cool salad then I would definitely recommend making all this stuff beforehand and chilling it because otherwise you're gonna have warm salad and I know that grosses some people out I'm not one of those people oh my god dinner day one mushroom brown rice risotto Oh my god, this was so good. I love risotto so much, but risotto traditionally is really annoying to make because you basically have to constantly stir it for like 40 minutes and like who has time for that? So this is like a cheat risotto and it's a little bit healthier because it's got brown rice so we've got, got those good multi-grains going on and honestly I love this. I think that it was 10 out of 10 easy to make which really surprised me because again traditional risotto super annoying super hard to make but this risotto you basically you know put stuff in the pot let it go for like 45 minutes and like let it boil down and then add in the last few ingredients at the end and it was so good like so good and what was nice is I I went for a run I came home I put all this stuff into a pot and then I went and took a shower like a nice nice chill shower shaved my legs all of that came back it was just finishing up I added the last few ingredients it was ready to go so it was perfect for if you have a really short run and someone else is home to watch the stove or if you know you have something to do where you don't have time to be like taking stuff out of the oven and putting stuff into the oven and you know maybe if you're not quite hungry yet this is a good recipe and honestly it tasted so good it's not quite as like fluffy and creamy as real risotto might be but honestly, I still devoured all of this and it makes a lot. I think that I was not prepared for how much each of these was going to make, especially since I didn't know that my parents weren't going to be eating any of these with me. So I had so many leftovers, so much going on. Breakfast day two, I had the salmon spread again. I didn't film it because I already filmed it. Why? You guys don't need to go watch me put salmon spread on a bagel two days in a row. But I also tried the anti-inflammatory chocolate, quote unquote, milk and... I thought that it was good. I'd give it a 9 out of 10 for taste. I don't like ginger, so that's what the minus one point is. That's just a total personal preference. I did substitute in ginger paste for actual like ginger root, so I don't know how much that would impact the taste. If there would be like chunks of ginger, because that sounds... Bleh, bleh. I hate ginger. I don't hate it. I just, it needs to be very subtle and it was not very subtle in this recipe, but again, I changed a type of ingredient so that could be totally on me, totally could be user error. I think that this definitely made it easier since I don't have a food processor, I just have a normal blender to make sure that the ginger wasn't chunky because that just sounds literally so disgusting. I had to add in vanilla oat milk to it because I think that just the way that the recipe is in the book with just like coconut milk and it has like 
you know, cocoa powder and a couple other ingredients. I don't want to say the exact recipes because, you know, the books aren't that expensive and I know that they put a lot of work into them, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you the exact recipes because that just seems like a dick move. So it's just kind of like a smoothie. The consistency also was off at first because like if you're calling it like a milk, I'm expecting like a little bit of a thicker texture and it was just very watery. So once I added in the vanilla oat milk though, it was so good. I drank all of it in like one sitting with my breakfast and it was really good. Oh, and then also I used date syrup instead of dates. So that I've substituted date syrup instead of dates in a lot of recipes. I would definitely recommend this for anything that's going to be liquid because dates don't always, you know, they don't always liquefy completely, but date syrup or date nectar, that's what the, the stuff that I currently have is, is calling itself. It's just date syrup, but it's really good. Make sure you get one that doesn't have any sugar added, any other ingredients or anything so that you're staying true to recipes. Lunch day two, I made the pesto tuna melt. Pesto tuna melt. Once again, delicious. I've made this recipe like a million times. This is one of the first recipes I think that I tried out of this book when I bought it last spring, maybe? Last winter? God, I don't know how long these books have been in my life. I know I got them some part, sometime when I was in my last apartment. The tuna melt is so good. I think later in the week I made an arugula cashew pesto and I think that that kind of pesto would be really good in this. Also, I had some like pre-made store pesto in the fridge so I used that and it was also delicious. I think this is such a filling good recipe when you really need like a hearty sandwich. If you're looking for something like lighter, this is not it. And then I had a little bit of leftover risotto as well just because I was really hungry this day. The risotto makes a really good side dish also if you're like, you know, making a big meal that you want side dishes for. Dinner day two, I had their fish tacos with the mango avocado salsa recipe. They had a, a list of recommended fish, but my parents had bought shrimp. We have taco night every Tuesday, so, you know, insert that white people taco night meme. Anyway, so the shrimp tacos, they're really good. And this salsa, oh my God, it was incredible. They do mention in there to wear gloves while you were chopping the jalapeno. And I absolutely recommend that because after I chopped at the jalapeno without wearing gloves, I washed my hands like three times and then I itched my nose like that. And then I got jalapeno on the inside of my nose. And then I started crying and then it was burning worse because my nose was running and the jalapeno wear gloves. But this recipe was so good. It was so easy to make. It was just chopping stuff up, throwing it in a bowl. I think that honestly, I didn't add any other toppings to my taco besides this and it didn't need anything else. I would give it a eight out of 10 for ease of making it just because mango is so annoying to chop up. Like so annoying, but worth it, but so annoying. Breakfast, I had the salmon spread again. Lunch, I had another tuna melt and risotto because the tuna recipe makes two sandwiches worth of stuff. Dinner day three, I made the arugula cashew pesto with zucchini noodles. Honestly, this was the flop. This was a flop, I'm not gonna lie. I love arugula, I love cashews, I love everything that was in the pesto, but the pesto itself was too heavy to have on pasta. I don't know what it was. It might've been user error, I'll say that. It was too heavy maybe i put too much of it on everything that i was having but honestly this is the only recipe that i did not finish the leftovers and i ended up throwing them away because i didn't want them no one in my family wanted them i tried it on normal noodles on thursday night for dinner and it just it was a flop but i will say that the pesto was really easy to make i might try this recipe again with less oil and try using less of it on everything that i put it on Yes, I can say words. Honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of this. Personal preferences are a thing. This might be your favorite recipe in the book. I don't know, it's just my personal take on it. For breakfast on Thursday, I mixed it up and I made the oatmeal banana pancakes. Oh my God, these were so good. I added dark chocolate chips to them, even though the recipe called for frozen blueberries because we were out of frozen blueberries. And oh my God, they were so good. It made about three breakfasts worth of pancakes, which was awesome because I mean, I got to eat pancakes for three days in a row for breakfast. And my mom had some too, and I still had three meals worth. So it was so good. I 10 out of 10 recommend it. Taste 10 out of 10. I would say seven out of 10 in terms of ease to make it, just because making oat flour is a dish. There is, you know, making pancakes, you just use so many dishes, it gets kind of annoying. Mildly annoying just because of how many dishes it takes. I lied. I'm gonna give it like an eight and a half out of 10. I just hate doing dishes. It's not hard to make. I'm just a baby. For lunch day four, I had the mushroom risotto leftovers again. Dinner, I tried to make normal pasta with the arugula pesto. It still flopped. I ended up having half a tuna melt also with that. It just, it wasn't it. I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. Breakfast and lunch 
on Friday I had pancakes, leftovers in the morning, risotto, leftovers for lunch, and for dinner I failed the challenge. I was planning on making my favorite pizza from this book, Amy's Recovery Pizza. It's so good. It's got goat cheese, red onion, and sweet potatoes on it, and it is delicious, but I didn't realize that we were out of pizza crust. I use garlic naans for them. I didn't realize we were out of garlic naan, so I got home from a hard speed workout and my dad had just bought pizza, so I ate pizza. And I have no guilt about it because that pizza was delicious and I was hungry. So that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed my first little challenge video. I'm switching over to making fitness-based content. So I've got up one fitness video right now and I'm going to keep going for it. So I forgot to film an outro for this video because my camera died and I just had to clock back in, go back to work because I filmed this during my lunch break. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If there's any challenges that you want to see me try, throw it down in the comments below and it'd be great if you could like this video, comment anything that you liked or didn't like about it. What's your favorite recipe from the book? Let me know. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. I'm going to be posting two times a week during December and if you're watching this any day after the day that this video goes up, I will have launched my blog. It has fun posts like a sum up of this entire video. Definitely go follow that. If you want to learn more about my running, more about different recipes I try, challenges I try, it's a great place to go. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you go tell someone that you love them. Bye!